wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. This very evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you're domiciled, depending on where you're listening to us from, we welcome you to another extraordinary broadcast here live on this glorious platform, Radio Biafra, going out to the entirety of humanity. Biafra, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. We are the only indigenous broadcaster out of Africa being listened to right across the surface of this very planet Earth. And as always, as I'm welcoming you, please endeavor to welcome other people as well. Share the links as widely as possible. And as always, house rules and protocols dictate that I must tell you how we operate on this very platform. You are listening to us on a multitude of platforms, I must say. We are simulcasting this very broadcast. We are on FM in Biafalan. We are on satellite. We are on IPOB Community Radio. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. We are broadcasting on Facebook. We are everywhere. If you wish to, and of course, YouTube. I keep forgetting YouTube, University of Radio Biafra is on YouTube. Try and share that as well, especially those who are in civilized countries. We are data doesn't cost very much. If you're listening to us via Radio Biafra app, it is a low data usage uh, a platform. So also is IPOB Community Radio. If you experience any difficulties, please go to Twitter or you go to Instagram. It is very clean, very crisp. So also is YouTube as well. I welcome each and every one of you. Heaven has given me a message to preach and I must preach it this very evening. Be a long time now. The time now is four minutes past 7 p.m. in the evening, which confirms that we are live and direct. If you look at your clock right now or your wristwatch or your timepiece, the time is precisely four minutes past the top of the hour. Regardless of where you are, I welcome each and every one of you I welcome our Ududua brethren who are listening from right across the world. And for the very first time, I also welcome Middle Belt as well because they have listened and they have raised their banner as well. We have seen their coat of arms, we have seen their flag, and we welcome them to this very family of liberators and those wishing to extricate themselves from the damnable zoological republic of Nigeria. Before we go any further, I am going to pray as tradition demands. And as I hand over our proceedings this very evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are, to the Most High Elohim, I ask you please to get your pen and paper ready. Because somebody made a very serious joke, which I think I will um, allude to in the course of our program this very evening. Do not forget your pen and your paper because the whole world is listening, every government of the world is listening, every intelligence agency around the world is listening, people are listening, and I'm told so also are immigration officials from Canada as well. Everybody listens to Radio Biafra. They all do. If you go to Abuja now, everywhere has come, every government house you have in the zoo, people are attentively glued to their listening device to receive this very gospel that Elohim has mandated me to preach, and I must preach it. My name is Mazen Namdekano. I am the leader of the largest mass movement on the face of this earth, the indigenous people of Biafra, I am the director of radio, Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, Chuku Kikabi Anapurumi Henine, a servant, of the wonderful people of Biafra. Once again, I must warn those of you who are listening via Facebook, my official page, you know it is heavily sanctioned. I will ask you please to be prepared to switch over to Instagram or to Twitter at a moment's notice because very soon, when this very program hots up, they will begin to interfere because they wouldn't want you to hear what we're saying. And in fact, I was asking somebody to compile the names I want to do a very, very special post on my page tomorrow morning. 
and I was compiling the names of all the journalists in the zoo who are influential, all the journalists responsible for sustaining what is in a sense unsustainable, this very regime of tyranny, a regime of terrorism, a regime of backwardness, a regime of poverty, piloted by the Fulani Caliphate. I will compile all their names, please. Look for also those of them who are running Facebook as well. I want to add their names. I want them to understand what the Fulanis are doing to Yoruba people. I want them to understand what the Janjaweed are doing to the Yoruba race. As they are busy trying to fight to defend what is in essence indefensible, their land is being taken over. We must preach this very gospel this very day. prophecies is unmatchable. Those of you may remember in 2014 when they were campaigning, jostling, and politicking in the Zoological Republic of Nigeria that man created for the habitation of animals called Nigerians. I made it very clear to you then, 
if those of you who are listening tonight or some of you can remember i said to all of you that buhari is the one that holds the key to biafra i don't know how many of you can remember this but i preached on this hallowed platform on this radio biafra this god ordained radio station for the restoration of the children of light that they may enjoy the sovereignty that god almighty promised them i preached it here on this very platform i told you do not despair do not panic that the pharaoh is coming and it is buhari i told you so on this very platform i'm sure that some of you can remember that i said that buhari is the surest way for us to get biafra is it not happening ma'am everything i tell you is gospel Remember when I said that Buhari will give us Biafra? Those were the exact words I used. And it is now manifesting before our eyes. Everything happening today in the Zoological Republic of Nigeria is because they refuse to let us go. I remember, I think it was in 24, 2015 to be precise, uh, thereabouts, I was in the USA and I was granted an interview by Rudolf Okonkwa, if I'm not mistaken. And I told him that if they do not give us Biafra, that Nigeria will be worse than the fact that Somalia will be a paradise compared to Nigeria. What is happening today? These are words on the marble. These are, I wouldn't call it prediction. These are prophetic pronouncements on this very hallowed platform that all over the world today people are witnessing and confessing to its accuracy everything happening today in the zoological republic is because they refuse to let Biafra go and i also want to tell them this evening or depending on where they are that the more you continue to delay the coming of Biafra, the more calamity you're going to face. And I want to point it out. I want to speak very calmly this evening so they can understand what I'm saying. Remember when I asked you to allow Biafra to go and you refused. And so I'm now speaking to the Sultan of Sokoto and the entire Janjaweed Caliphate. These, these very horrible people that have brought death, destruction and mayhem upon the lives of very quiet, peace-loving people, not just of the Middle Belt, but across the entire South. I want you to listen to me very carefully this evening. Because of your delay in allowing Biafra to go now, you will lose Odudua as well. I want you to understand that the more you hold on to this very rigid, idiotic, you know, um, should I say unwavering position, that Nigeria should remain the way it is, the more you're balkanizing it, not just in the spirit, but also in the physical realm. Where am I saying this now? Odudua agitation has hit a crescendo. And for the very first time, they have now also identified some of their leaders as being their problem. They are no longer blaming anybody else. And when if people begin to blame their leaders as we have been doing i think they have cut off the whole thing i, I believe that um i don't know if um, facebook has cut off uh, the video on my page i have no idea but we shall see let us continue if they keep you out please find alternative platform to listen people should go to my page and share all the links um, um that people are using to listen to us so that those who are on my page who are suffering as always will be able to listen via other means after this very program it will work very very hard to ensure that the sound cloud is uploaded as quickly as possible i must preach i asked you to let be a go you said no now Odudua is with us i did we then pleaded and said allow Odudua and biafra to go you said no now middle belt has joined if you say no to Middle Belt, Odudua and Biafra becoming free very soon, the Habe Republic of Hausa Land will rise up again with their own banner. Fulani, you have nowhere to go to. What you're then now going to do is to unleash your dogs of war. That is what you're going to do. 
you will think that by treating the Hausa people to believe in you, to come and join you to fight other people, as you have done in the past, you will think that would be a viable option to take. But I'm telling you to spell your doom. I warned you before. You people should have let Biafra go on time and to all of you shouting insecurity, insecurity everywhere. We are dying. Look at our country. Come and speak. I warned you in 2014 and 2015. If you do not let Biafra go, everybody is going to suffer. And today, everybody is suffering. But I'm sure, you know, Fulani, they have this very primitive, almost a very satanic stubbornness that they have. They will say no. I want Fulani to understand something I said to Britain. You see, United Kingdom, those that created Nigeria, which I believe, you know, Britain, they also go in the realm of the spirit to do their own incantation. They may be top scientists, they may be an advanced country, they may be a civilized country, they may be enjoying the grace of God because Britain is blessed, believe it or not, highly blessed people. But I'm sure they see things. And I told Britain, the same pride that Britain um, um, had in the past in relation to Biafra, is the same, is, uh, Fulani has a very crude and primitive format of it. I want people to pay attention to what I'm saying tonight, very, very critically, please. I said, the pride, you know that pride, we are white people, we created you, who are you to tell us what to do? And here again, live on air, I said to Britain, God Almighty in heaven will divide you into pieces. And when you are being cut up into pieces, your soothsayers will be telling you it is because of Biafra, but your pride will tell you it is not. How can God love those niggas from Africa? Those monkeys, it's not possible. But I'm telling you again tonight, maybe now that your policies have changed slightly towards Biafra, you may have a reprieve. But I'm telling you this, if you maintain or insist that Nigeria should be won, this is for Britain. I'm sure that some, I, I, I don't know why I feel like recollecting what I've been saying in the past tonight. If you insist that Nigeria should be won, God will destroy Britain. And as Elohim is destroying Britain, you will not, your pride will not let you accept it's because of this lowly, these black people called Biafra. The same thing I'm saying to Fulani tonight. We are the children of God Almighty in heaven. We are the children of Elohim. You see, that is why we answer the names that we do. That is why we answer what you If you understand what I'm saying, that is why we answer Chibuzo. Chibuze. You must understand the reason why we answer these names. It is because we are the children of God. That is why we answer what you No matter how badly we upset and offend God, ultimately we are his children is going to forgive us and rescue us from whatever mess we may find ourselves in as it is now with this zoo called Nigeria. Full learning. You will end up with nothing. The best thing for you to do is to stop all this cry, cry, all this show that you're doing. Come and negotiate with us the date for a referendum that we, the children of light, may go and play the role that Almighty God in heaven intended for us to play in the advancement and development of black people all over the world or else you will lose everything. When I told all of you Nigerians that delaying the exit of Biafra from the zoo will bring unmitigated disaster upon you, you did not believe me. I told you, Somalia will be better than you. Allow us to go. You thought I was, I was the one who is going to fight? No, not at all. The host of heaven is now fighting on our behalf. And I'm warning you, even Britain can see the handwriting on the wall. You, Janja with Caliphate, I am advising you, as fellow Africans, if I can call you that, 
the sooner you let Biafra go, the better, or else you will lose everything. And you see Sokoto State, that, the, that is the seat of your power, a war will be fought there for 136 years. After that, you will lose everything. I'm advising you, don't allow the demons that you worship to deceive you. Biafra has come to stay. There is nothing any mortal can do about it. It's the word of God. There is nothing man can do about it. I am warning you. Oduduwa is now with us. Due to your delay, because in 2014, 2015, they were not serious. They said, uh, they said no, I want Nigeria. But today, Oduduwa is more fanatical. I can even say, as fanatical as we Biafrans are about their sovereignty and their freedom. Only a few days ago, Middle Belt have now joined us. And I can assure you, if you continue, the Habe Republic of the Hausa Kingdoms will rise up in the north to demand for their own independence. And I can say to everybody tonight, as I've always said, anybody that raises their banner and their flag to seek independence will get free oil and free gas from Biafra land in perpetuity. Forever and ever. I want you to understand this. Therefore, every security agent in Nigeria, every soldier, every police, every naval man or woman, every Air Force personnel, those of you in civil defense, you must each go back to your villages. Go back to where you come from to defend it. Because as you are being slaughtered, as those of you from the south are being killed in the north, they are sending people from right across the Sahel. These are deadly scavengers to take over your land. You must bear this in mind. You must go back to your fatherland right now to defend it. Because I want all the army and the police people to do a very simple survey. Maybe tomorrow morning. Because I know all of you are listening to what I'm saying tonight. Do a very simple slight survey tomorrow morning. All of you in the army, all of you in the police, I want you to do something very slight. Call your respective villages. I'm not saying where you're living in the township. Call where you come from your village. Ask anybody in your village. I'm, I'm talking about those of you serving in Nigeria army, serving in the police, serving in the navy, serving in the air force, and you are not Janjawu, you're not following army. All non fulani personnel in Nigeria security services or security agencies or whatever you, they call themselves, pick up your telephone tonight, even as I'm doing this broadcast. Call home. Ask them, are there fulani terrorists, headsmen, miyetiela in my village? How far are they from my house? Just make a very simple phone call. That will convince you that as you are busy, Defending your one Nigeria for the Fulani, inadvertently, they are busy conquering you. It's a very simple experiment. You are a soldier, you are in Navy, you are in Air Force. Pick up the phone. I'm not saying because you are you are born in Oju Eleba. You should call and say, is there anything happening in Oju Eleba? No, no. Call your village where your father comes from. Where your grandparents come from. Because we are patrilineal, we lean towards our father. We come from where our father come from. Call your village. Ask people in your village, how close are the Fulani terrorists to my house? How close are they to where I'm living? Or supposed to be living? They will tell you, only then will you appreciate what we've been saying for long. That the more you fight for one Nigeria, you are doing it for the sole benefit of the Fulani Caliphate. Because they are busy taking over your village. They are keeping you busy in the army and in the police. Meanwhile, they have taken over your village. You know, when, I, when people say to me that there are people from the Middle Belt who are still in the police and in the army serving in various locations and trying to defend one Nigeria, I feel sorry for them. Go back to your village and see what life is like there. They are in refugee camps. That tells you all you need to know about the zoo and why you must heed my call this evening. You're not going to die of hunger. Abandon the army, abandon the police. Go back to where you come from and defend your land because the Fulanis have come in to take it over from you. You must go back home 
and defend your land right now. Has it not dawned on everybody that the defense of one Nigeria as presently constituted is only aiding the march of the gentle with the caliphate to the Atlantic? Because the more you are in Burana, you are in Yoruba, you are in Taraba. You see me big, you come from the full that they are trying to take over your land, killing, raping, maiming people. Did you not see the, 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 the batch they sent to Yoruba land that was intercepted today? But there are Yoruba people who are fighting right now in Nigeria army in Borono as they are moving towards the north to go and defend their so-called one Nigeria against Boko Haram, which incidentally was created by the same Fulani people. Another consignment of Fulani killers and murderers are heading into Yoruba land. Does that make sense to anybody at all? These are the things we are trying to get you to understand, but for some reason, some of you can't get it. You are moving to Yobe. You are being posted to Yobe, to Tarapa, to Adamawa, to Borono, to go and fight insurgency. Is that correct? On the way, you are passing Dangote trailers and trucks coming into your land with the same insurgents, the same bandits coming to your village to rape your mother, to abduct your sisters, your nieces, and in most cases, your nephews as well. I want people to actually sit down tonight and rationalize what I'm saying. Those of you in the police fighting for one Nigeria, those of you even in the print media or in the electronic media, all those journalists trying to keep Nigeria warm, call your village and ask them, what is the status of security in my village? They will tell you the phone is are everywhere. Doesn't that make a mockery of all the things that you claim you believe in? You know, sometimes a lot of people have what I call misplaced, you know, um, um, sense of patriotism. You see, in Nigeria, the only people you owe your loyalty to is to your tribe or your ethnic group. That's where your loyalty should lie and nowhere else. Not because Nigeria is an artificial creation. No, 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 I'm not even going that far. But because the more you fight to keep Nigeria won, the more you're making it easier for the Fulanis to conquer you. That's what it is. I want people to understand this evening. I, people are asking why am I speaking in this tone and in this, because I wanted to sink in very well. I don't want anybody to say, oh, because he was insulting me. I wasn't able to understand what he's saying. That is why I am preaching the way I'm preaching tonight so that you can understand it very, very clearly. We must end Nigeria as quickly as possible. I'm not talking about months, but in weeks. Why am I saying that? Because the Fulanese have perfected their plan to start an all-out conquest by the year 2022. By the year 2022, they want to start their full conquest. So we must stop them before they commence. If they commence, we cannot stop them. Because if they commence, all those territories they have taken from Benue State, all those territories that they have taken from Plateau State, all those territories they are occupying in Kogi State, believe you me, if we continue to wait any day that the world steps in to say enough is enough, they will claim that very territory as their own. They would have advanced all the way from Sokoto to Katsina Allah in Benue State. What does that tell you about your future? What does that tell you about your future? You must listen very carefully without prejudice tonight please as we preach this very gospel all of us biafra oduduwa Middlebell, and hausa these are the indigenous populations that we have these are the true owners of nigeria for other people do they are less than 10 percent of the population they are not indigenous to nigeria not at all and in africa you must come from somewhere you must come from somewhere. They have promised them that Nigeria is theirs for the taking. For them to succeed, we have to be as foolish as the house of people were. 
for them to succeed, we have to be as politically naive as the Middle Belt people were. For them to succeed, we have to be as moronic as the Yorubas have been for years. For them to succeed, the Biafrans will have to be as foolish as they have been for a very, very long time. Or should I say, those that call themselves the political class or intelligentsia, but, uh, you know, very, very daft and foolish, if you ask me. If we remain this stupid and foolish, the Fulanis will take us over. They will take our land from us before our eyes, and there is nothing anybody can do about it. Do you know that in Olu today they were shooting? You know, where today they were firing everywhere, trying to scare people away. The same thing they cannot do when they confront Miyatiela terrorists with their cattle and the for the in the forest, killing, pillaging, and raping people. They have never confronted them. But they are on the streets of Oweri. And Olu, firing and shooting indiscriminately. This, any time I tell you something, please take it very seriously. And as heaven told me many, many years ago, the late dead Buhari did all he could and left the rest to Abak Yari, to Isafuntu, and all the rest of them. They have done their best. The Fulani Caliphate have done their best to destroy Nigeria. But it seems that they are not alone in all of this. We must help them to destroy Nigeria and bring it to an end as quickly as possible. Somebody called it a pantomimed country of foreign terrorists. It is only going to get worse. A country where a minister professes to be a terror sympathizer and 200 million people could not remove a single minister. How do you think you can remove a president? Or oh, so be it somebody that they are ruling in his name. Pure common sense. You cannot. The fallen stranglehold is everywhere. Look at all the kidnappings and killings in Benue, in, across the Middle Belt, if all the way from southern Kaduna. Even those in Brown, even those in the, call it the Northeast. Look at their plight and look at their lives. Who are the ones doing the killings? I asked you to ask yourself this question last week. They are Fulani. Who gave them the guns with which to carry out all these murder, sackings, mayhem all over the place? This is where Nigerians do not reason, where they do not think. They don't think and they do not reason. I want to ask them, look at all the kidnappings, the killings, the land grabbing, the forcible conversion of Christians to Muslims happening in Niger State and elsewhere. Look at all the things that have been happening. Who gave guns to these people? They claim they are jihadists from Mali, from Senegambia, from across the Sahel. They came into Nigeria, either with guns or without. If they came with guns, how come they were not stopped? If they came in without guns, these people are from Mali, mind you, and all the rest of them, how come they managed to acquire guns? These are the things you must ask yourself, and the sooner you find answers to these questions, the sooner you realize how foolish it is trying to defend what is in a sense indefensible, which is one Nigeria. Who helped them to come into Nigeria? The same foreign people today tell me about one Nigeria. Let's keep the country one. There's insecurity everywhere. Insecurity. Who brought in these murderers into Nigeria? Nobody is asking the foreign caliphate this question. Because they organized it. Elvify all the Fulani governors because they believe the nonsense that Nigeria belongs to the Fulani race. It is theirs for the taking. And they actually believe it because of the idiots like Wike and that great halot, that bleaching, palm wine drinking halot 
in Asorok. Look at what is happening all around you and ask yourself, who gave Miyetiala AK-47 with which to intimidate, to kill, to pillage, and to rape? Who gave the Fulani terrorists all these weapons they're wielding everywhere? How can a Fulani nomadic cattle herder know where to find a dealer that sells bullets? You know, have you ever asked, when you see that lonely Fulani boy with AK-47, how do you think he replenishes his stock of bullets? Who gives it to him? So you, you think he will leave his cattle? Let's say they are somewhere around, um, what's he called, at um, Amasia, you know, with his AK-47. He, maybe he has gone, he has raped, he has kidnapped, he has killed a few people. Ask yourself this question. How do they get a resupply of bullets? Who gives it to him? A full and a cattle head. Have you asked yourself that question before? Any day you do, you will understand the hopelessness of one Nigeria. Do you think that this invasion and conquest of Middle Belt would have been so easy? Had Middle Belt seen what Ujupu saw in 1966 and 67? If not for the prejudice of the people that call themselves Nigerians, do you think that you'll be seeing what you're seeing today? Had all of you supported Biafra, do you think you'll be losing your land today, losing your head, losing your faith, losing your religion? Do you think that Leah Shwebu will be more like, um, I don't know, a breathing, whatever it is, for foreign terrorists? Is that what you think? I want Nigerians to understand this. God is punishing all of you for what you did against Biafra. All the mayhem, all the killings, ask yourself, why is it is only in Biafra land that the Fulanis do not have any genuine stronghold? No foothold in Biafra land. Why do you think so? God is punishing every part of Nigeria for the crimes you committed against his children. I'm not expecting you to believe what I'm saying, but you know it to be a fact. That is the fact. But today, thankfully and mercifully, the brute is no more to tell you how miraculous God is. Buhari is dead, we know. How do we know that Buhari is dead, you may ask? Because God gave us brain to be able to use it to reason. That is why we are not animals, because that's what Mary Wollstonecraft said. The reason, the, the only difference between you and the full and a cow is because you can reason. Listen to me very carefully this evening. Buhari is no more. But the full and a caliphate to tell you how merciful God is. When Buhari died, had they said Buhari is dead? Ushibajo would have taken over. Ushibajo is more learned, more urbane, more conciliatory, more progressive. Nigeria was still the one. They, that would have made our work very, very difficult. Because maybe Ushibajo will come down to discuss and to negotiate, to say, oh, let's restructure, let's go back to the regions, either 1960 Constitution or 1963, whichever one would have continued in the suit. But to tell you how miraculous God is, they, he hardened their hearts. They said, no, it's our turn. It's our turn, must remain in power. The time they were doing it, they never knew that that would lead to the end of Nigeria. They never knew that. Elohim hardened their hearts. And today, the Fulanis have run Nigeria aground. And they are being openly vilified by everybody. Even Britain is fed up. USA is fed up with them. EU is fed up with them. Now you understand it, don't you? They themselves are the ones now conversing for coup. Forget all this nonsense you're hearing. They use one man called Clark who said he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. Senior advocate of what? I have no idea. He's an advocate asking army to come in to take over power under a civilian democratic dispensation. And he is a senior advocate of Nigeria, a supposedly learned man. When I tell you that they are not educated, they say I'm insulting them. Senior advocate of Nigeria, advocating for army to take over. Can you believe that? 
what is wrong with the people taking over in a revolution instead of mr clark to call for a revolution he's asking military very lazy way of approaching the issue of all the ills bedeviling nigeria now listen to me very very carefully please i beg of you how do you know that buhari is no more it is very very simple i want to prove it to you that he is no more very very simple because sometimes um you may be shocked but one plus one is equals two always buhari when ipob started to torment the zoo buhari came out to give a live press interview not once not two times not three times only ipo be giving them problems this was between 2015 2016. Four died on the 27th of january of 2017 i know the exact date he died before buhari's death he was having media chat discussing every blessed day live unscripted nobody would tell him what to say most of the times he was talking rubbish but at least nobody ever 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 guided him or asked him to say A or B. He had a mind of his own. Now, the Senate of Nigeria, listen very carefully, in a democracy, in a democracy, the Senate of Nigeria, or should I say a part of them, came out to say, we have not heard from our president despite the daily killings. That on its own is an impeachable offense. That on its own is an impeachable offense. You are telling me that a president is alive in a country bedeviled by insecurity left, right, and center. They are minting money. They are printing money every day. They call it quantitative easing. NMPC does not have any money anymore. They fall and they sell the oil and they pocket the money. The zoo is sinking. You have not heard from somebody who claims he's a president. Compare the character of the mask wearing idiot now to the Buhari you had before. Are they the same? You know, sometimes in life you expect people to be able to reason properly. I am asking you people, you Nigerians, the thing that you're seeing now coming from who you claim is Buhari Nasarok, the mask wearer, is it the same attribute of the man that you used to know? I'm sure the answer is no. The whole senate of the country lamenting we have not heard from the president the country is collapsing there is going to be war very very soon and he cannot speak do you know why he cannot speak because they know we are watching them the fear of ipob they know any move they make we are going to dissect and analyze that is why they cannot bring him out to speak not even common live presentation they cannot do it. And all of you went to school. Most of you are graduates. Most of you have PhDs. Are you telling me that your common sense, that I'm sure that all of you possess? I haven't told you yet that they, there is nobody there. In every other country of the world, ordinary COVID-19, they receive almost weekly briefings. Now, let me shock all of you. Do you know that before, even during Buhari, during Jonathan, during Yaradua, during Obasanjo, and even before that, have, have you asked yourself this question? How can Nigeria go through a whole calendar year without no official visit from any head of state from outside? Official state visit with state banquet. Because all over Africa, all over Europe, although there is COVID-19 lockdown, Heads of states are visiting each other. Have you asked yourself that question? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Now, the Senate, Nigeria's own Senate, is now saying, let me read it for you so you understand. A Senate where you have democracy. Any other place in the world, the Senate will go into a session, they will vote and say, we demand to see the president address the nation. That's how it is done. That is why it's a democracy, the rule of the people. 
and the house of the senate and the house of reps they are the people which the presidency is answerable to if they are serious all they need to do is to lay down a motion on the floor of both houses to say we have overwhelming uncontainable insecurity in the country and we demand that the president address the media the media chat to be bye bye for everybody but they know that the man there is not buhari they cannot bring him out unless they they set the stage unless they choreograph everything unless they plan it perfectly well and i'm asking you people uh, as those that claim they are learning what does that tell you about Hasanok? Let me read the news for you. The minority caucus of the National Assembly on Tuesday lamented President Buhari, the, lamented that President Muhammad Buhari has remained silent despite insecurity in the nation. Now, your primary duty as a head of state, I am not a head of state, but my primary duty is to make sure that the IPOB family all over the world that they are fine, in good condition. When there is a breach of security, I make sure, even in the middle of the night, I wake up and I make sure I address it. If I come on air, I speak about it. Live. A country of 200 million people. If this man couldn't speak under COVID, he could not speak under raging insecurity, almost civil war status. When is he going to talk? It's a simple question I'm asking uh, uh, Nigerians. That tells you that there is no Buhari, he's dead. The clown they put there, all they can do is to script something, use deep fake artificial intelligence to mimic the voice of Buhari through a microphone. You think it is the idiot we speaking. There is no Buhari. That is why, despite this rating, even to address people live on live, I said live on TV, he cannot do it. Once in a while, they package him, they bring him out, they say, oh, yes, look, oh, yeah. and the Yoruba people who are eyeing 2023 will just simply concur and wait for their turn to come. It's only two years away. Why can't we just wait? And we'll start enjoying oil and gas money. The caucus also said that the APC-led administration of President Buhari has continued to breach the constitution. We have not, according to Abaribe, we have not heard from our president, despite the daily killings that are going on, and have turned Nigeria into a killing field of unimaginable proportion. Nigeria is at war on all fronts, basically. Fighting for the domination and impunity. People are dying every blessed day. The person you claim is a president cannot speak. What is his job then? I'm asking you. Do you see how we know that Buhari is dead? That even the Senate is begging for him to speak in a democracy. I'm advising them today because some of them, they claim they're educated, but they're not. I'm advising you on what to do. Constitutionally, you have the powers. Go and pass a motion on the floor of both houses. Send it up to Asarok and say, we demand to see you to address the nation live and answer questions from journalists regarding what is happening in the country. Not just address. You must be interrogated. We want to ask you, then you will see that the idiot will fall apart. Because we have planted a press man there. I'm not going to tell you his name or his network. He is going to ask him a question in Fufu, the, the, the native foreign language that the old, dead, tyrant Buhari spoke before he died on the 27th of January, 2017. I stake my life on it. I have said to them, if you can bring out this man and prove his Buhari, I will drop their fragitation and apologize. But I know that the idiot is dead. They are shielding. The only reason why they cannot speak is because, you know, they thought I will, I will remain with... They, they, they don't know how we discovered that uh, Jubril had fled. They were shocked. They thought I will be saying Jubril, Jubril, Jubril all the time so that Western intelligence will say, oh, he doesn't have his facts right. I know when they switched from Jubril to Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad from the Niger Republic. That is the new Buhari you have. That is why you cannot see him. That is why he cannot do tours. That is why you cannot see him 
uh, come out to receive heads of state. That is why nothing, everything is secrecy. You can be killing, people can be dying, you never hear a word from him. They are shielding Yusuf and Baka Muhammad from talking because the day he grants any live, unedited, unscripted interview, the political clerks in Nigeria will commit mass suicide. Because I'm sure that's what they would do. Rather than, uh, you know, come around to say, oh, IPOB, Inam the Khan has been right all this while, you know, they would rather die. That's black people for you. They will commit mass suicide. That thing in Asorok, as I told you, 2017, is not Buhari. If you say he is Buhari, I want him to have a live media chat. The type the old Buhari had on the 31st of December of 2015. It's a challenge. If you claim Buhari, that that idiot there is Buhari, let him come out and address the security situation in the zoo called Nigeria. In a live media chat, he will never ever do it. That the, the shame of Nigerians will be open for the whole world to see. The war, you know, uh, right now, a lot of countries, in fact, Nigeria is the only country in the, uh, 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 the only passport that you require visa to go to almost every other country in the world. Well, because of how useless it is. Any day, this that thing there, Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad grants any live interview or media chat. If they see, if you say you're a Nigerian outside, people will spit on your face. They will say, we know you people as fraudsters and criminals. We never knew you're even this stupid. At least criminals are supposed to be very smart. You people are equally very, very foolish. So, Abaribe, the Senate, and they, they can talk all they like. That thing there can never grant any live interview for anybody. He will not do it. Any day they do it, they try that. They try it. They are finished and they understand that very well. That is why you cannot hold a live media chat. People are talking about impeachment. Let us impeach him. As, as uh, my dear brother Baka said, let us impeach him. Do you know why Fulani is against impeachment? But Fulani wants that boy to leave. They want to remove Buhari, that name Buhari from Asok. That is what they want. Oh, forget all this nonsense that he wants planting it everywhere. The only reason why they said no to impeachment and why they are running after Mbaka that I'm glad they've released. I didn't want to talk about him or write about him or tweet in the afternoon. We are just waiting to see if they will hold him. <laughs> and then that thing they want, they will see it. But then, luckily for them, they release him. Let me tell you something you don't know. The reason why they're against Mbaka and everybody talking about impeachment is because once you impeach him, listen, he will be forced to come out to respond in the open. Journalists will interview him. That is why all of them, they are running health as counter. Nobody want nothing. They don't want you to, to talk about him. Because any day you vote in the House of Senate or in the Senate or in the, in the House of Reps to impeach him, you will now give him a right to reply. Because the article, as, as Trump did in America two times, because the articles of impeachment, because the articles of impeachment will outline his crimes and misdemeanors, and the law of natural justice dictates that you must give him the right to reply. Who is going to reply? Buhari is dead. Is it Yusuf from Baka Mohammed that will reply? The cabal won't allow it. Now you understand, don't you? That is why they don't, they're, they're against impeachment. Because you cannot impeach a dead man. The full and a caliphate control all of you in the zoo using Yoruba media and your political leaders. They have captured the two critical, in fact, there are three critical constituencies in life media that brings you information and enlightenment, you are political leaders to traditional rulers and also your religious leaders. That is why anytime they sense um, um, danger, they will send DSS. People are trying to destabilize the country. They want to remove Buhari from office. Oh, no. 
in order to sow seeds of doubt and confusion amongst you so you can no longer be together to ask for what is right asking for anybody you claim to be buhari to address the nation is not causing trouble it is not it is called democratic accountability isn't it these are the things you must bear in mind this thing about coup that they sent mr clark to talk about coup is a well-planned move to manipulate people's minds into thinking that Buhari was removed as a way of hiding the fact that Buhari is dead. Fulani is praying for a coup. Forget all that, not that was planning it. And I want them, I want Asorok to know that we know, I know their plan. They want to do a coup to say, oh, we have removed Buhari, he's incompetent, as a way of hiding the fact that Buhari is dead. That is what they want to do. And once they do the coup and they put in somebody, they want, they, first of all, they said, we'll put in a Yoruba senior, Yoruba general, to calm everybody down, to stop Yoruba agitation. That's what they, I'm just trying to let Tiribu understand. For, uh, if you don't know, they, they have two people in mind. One is a Yoruba high-ranking army officer. The other one is from the middle belt. They want to use them to try to calm everything down. The same thing they tried to do with Ogundigwe in 1966. And they ended up doing with Gowon. In that they, they killed everybody. Every Biafran high-ranking officer they got their hands on, they killed. All of them. They knew the world was very, very upset. Fuller knew they could not sell that very narrative to the world. They approached Brigadier Gundibe and asked him to take over the reins of power. He said no. They went to go on, a Christian from the Middle Belt. That is how they operate. The same thing they want to do now. So all this talk of they want to overthrow us is all rubbish. It's Fulani who are planning it because they know that the clock is running down. They know the clock is running down. They know that once people, you know, um, shed this cloak of ignorance and begin to say that Buhari is dead, that they are finished. They want to use a coup. Fulani coup, by the way. After all, Fulani controls the army. How can anybody do a coup in Nigeria? How is that possible? Fulani controls everything. All the generals that are Fulani, everybody in the hierarchy of the army is Fulani. So how can you do a coup? How is that possible? All the commanders of the tank corps you have in, in the zoo called Nigeria, they're all Fulani people. So how can they do a coup? All the people that lead the infantry in Nigeria, are all, all the commanders, they're all Fulani. So how can you conduct a coup? It is the Fulani planning a coup so they can say that Buhari was removed uh, due to incompetence. And then after that, they'll say, oh, he's, still, he's living a quiet life. You know him, he's a man of peace and quiet. After a while, they will not tell that Bukhari is dead. He died in his sleep. That's what they want to do. If you don't know, let me tell you. And I'm saying to Fulani Caliphate tonight, <laughs> you don't know who you're dealing with. Before you make any move, we know. Every move that you make, we know. We are aware of it. So stop deceiving yourselves. We know what you're up to. We understand your game plan. This thing about a uh, uh, coup is because you want to remove Yusuf Abaka Muhammad before it's too late. Because there's nobody in Asorok. If there is anyone in Asorok, the person will be talking. Nigeria is finished. There is no country called Nigeria anymore. Nigeria finished last year. Nigeria is now only existing on paper and the fear of South, the South. The cowardice in people of the South. And the promise of a greater, better tomorrow for the likes of Wike is only what is holding the zoo together. The zoo is dead. Absolutely dead. Their plan has failed. Only if the politicians we have in Biafra and in fact in the entire South can repent. Or else what awaits them is due. The game the Fulanis are playing, just don't...
Remember I told you tonight, the game the Flanders are playing is to carry out a coup and install a Yoruba senior army officer or somebody from the middle belt to calm everybody down. That's what they want to do. And I want them to understand that we know. Well, our intelligence services is second to none in the whole world. In fact, by, by the time that Biafra stands, I'm sure that even Mossad will be coming to us to learn one or two things. The Zoo people think that we are stupid, but we are not. We are highly intelligent, more intelligent than all of them put together. They want to carry out a coup and claim that Buhari was removed. People are talking about insecurity. In the same country where people are being forcibly converted to Islam, in Niger State, in night in broad daylight, people are abducted, people killed, army today firing in all, army today firing in nobody, shooting sporadically everywhere. There is war. A slow burning war in the zoo, but you don't know. I don't know why the Middle Belt people will not rise up to defend their land. Because it's now very clear that you can lament and cry from now till the kingdom come, the world won't listen to you. Defend yourselves. That is what you need to do. That is what you must do. To tell you that this is their plan, all of them, it is their plan together, all of them. To tell that they planned all of these things. Now listen to what a minister is saying. You know, sometimes when you hear these things, you don't quite believe it at first. You think, oh, maybe somebody's pulling your legs until you go and verify it for yourself. Kidnapping and banditry are not federal offenses in Nigeria, according to Buhari's government. Also, you know, Buhari by name. When I say Buhari, it doesn't mean Buhari is alive. It's the name they're using to rule. Are you listening to me? Kidnapping and banditry are not federal offenses in Nigeria. Then I asked them, what are federal offenses in Nigeria then? They, 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 I, I, don't, I don't know how, do you see how foolish these people are? You see, sometimes I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if it, this is punishment or what from God that I should be discussing monkeys like this. This man is a, is a baboon. Why do you have federal high courts then and federal courts of appeal? So all the cases being tried, you know, this is something Nigerians don't know. Even those that call themselves lawyers like, like backyard, quack lawyers like we can. Quack, backyard lawyer. Let me ask you Nigerians for one second. What cases do you think are tried in a federal high court? <laughs> Zoological Republic. And these people actually go to school, spend four years in a university, and come out as graduates. Even uh, doctorate degree holders of law. If kidnapping and banditry are not federal offenses, then why are you trying them in a federal high court? That's the meaning of it. Federal high court for federal offenses. State high court for state offenses. Sharia court for Sharia offenses, so to speak. Customary court for customary offenses. Do you know that even these states, they have their own appeal court, so to speak? Now you are trying a case in a federal high court, which means it is a federal offense. <laughs> but it is in the zoo. They don't know the meaning of it. They have no idea what it means. Nigeria is worse than a jungle. If a kidnapper and a bandit killing, slaughtering, raping people is not a federal offense. Oh, sorry. Federal offense is asking for a referendum. And you people have time for these animals. They call themselves politicians. Fools who cannot even reason very well. You have time for these people. Miss Yoji. They say that that's what Lai Muhammad said. It's not a federal offense. Federal offense is asking for your freedom. And all Nigerians can do is outrage, outrage, as Lai Mohammed says, prosecuting bandits, not Buhari's government's job. What is your job then? You took a constitution, you swore to protect lives and property. That was what you swore to do. Now tell me, for goodness sake, tell me, please, what is your job? Even the government that you claim that you have do not know their job anymore. They don't know what they're supposed to do. And they are in power. And you allow them to be in power. 
All you can do is outrage. We are outraged. Oh, have you heard what they are saying? Oh, have you heard what Clive Mohammed said? And that is all. The only solution is a popular revolution. I want youths from across the Middle Belt and the entire South to sit down, not to sit down in one place, communicate amongst yourselves and decide for a day to come when people will take over the streets. Let the revolution start. We outnumber them. They have AK-47, we have AK-47. They know it will be suicide for them to shoot at any crowd. They know it is suicide, not just for them, but for politicians nearby. The time for the revolution has come. Every day you lament, you tweet, you lament, you go to Facebook, you lament. Nothing is happening. They will never listen. That is who they are. That is how they are wired. They are never, ever going to listen. The only way they can listen is through mass action. A revolution is what is needed. The revolution, quit complaining, quit whining, and come out for this very revolution that must happen. It must happen. The same Fulani that brought in the bandits that are killing you are telling you that banditry is not a criminal offense, according to them. It's not their job to prosecute them. And by the way, if you're killed by, by kidnappers, you will go to heaven, according to the Islamic cleric. We ask him to do virgins be waiting for you. I don't know what, what is waiting for the women. I know that for the men, 72 virgins are waiting for you. For the women, I don't know if it's 72 men who are that are waiting for you as well. I have no idea. According to a cleric in a country you call civilized. How can you, how can some of you don't even have shame? How can you come from a country like this? If you're killed by criminals, the same flanny criminals, they will not be prosecuted. No wonder nobody's arresting them. If it's not a federal offense, so because listen, you know, federal the Nigeria is called Nigeria Police Force, which means it is loyal to the federal government. The army is loyal to the federal government, and they do not see kidnapping and banditry by Fulani people as a criminal offense. No wonder nobody's arresting them now. Is it a criminal offense to them? Do you understand me now? Being killed by kidnappers is a sure way of going to heaven. Only in Nigeria. You wake up the next time in Nigeria. Shame on all of you that stupidly refer to yourselves as Nigerians. Shame and be shame on all of you. The same people that came into power telling you will solve every problem. Look at some of you have no regard for history. Friendly, look at told you that these people are spending all they know how to do is to spend money. Oh, you both told you this nearly a hundred years ago. White man told you this. This full of me you're looking at, all they know is to spend money. They are very lazy. Oh, you both told you this, but you never listen. You never ever listen. Let me tell you what they're doing in the zoo. The same people we are coming to do that. Oh, how about one corruption? Have you been hearing about war and corruption lately? Because nobody is more corrupt than this current APC government. They are the worst of the worst in the history of Nigeria. 316 projects were duplicated, worth 39.5 billion in the budget for 2021. APC. Full and a Janjaweed party. The party of the 17 will be asking you to vote for him. These are hardened, hardened criminals wearing a bada and danchiki on the floor of the National Assembly, looting and stealing. That is why they don't want Nigeria to break. No, 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 our country, let's keep it one. Listen, because they are thieves, because of what they're getting. All of them, even from Biafra, from Ududua, all the, they, these are thieves, these are certified criminals. When they tell you about one Nigeria, is so they can keep duplicating the budget. It's here, yeah, it's a headline news. 316 duplicated projects worth 39.5 billion. It will go in the pocket of somebody. It's just news. You read it and you just go away, and it's nothing. Nobody cares. But that is your future. They steal this money, they go and print money for you. They steal this money, they bank it abroad in dollars, and they are printing worthless, useless naira for you. 
You people are in for one almighty shock, I'm telling all of you. But you will not know. After all, you're from the zoo. What do you know? Uh, were you not there when the Flanders came from, from Futajalon to conquer you? They're not coming from all across the Sahel in your backyard. You call the police, the police will not come because it's a federal offense. Uh, and uh, uh, according to federal government, it is not an offense. A supposedly federal offense is not a federal offense when it comes to Fulani. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Isn't it very ironic? It's, it, it's, we, we have even the even even the affrontery to even have the guts to face the media to mouth such rubbish. I'm sure oh, the entire diplomatic corps in Nigeria will be wondering what sort of animals are these. Kidnapping and banditry is that a federal offense? Therefore, federal police cannot arrest them. Army cannot arrest them. But they can arrest people who are agitating. They can arrest Fadam Baka. They can burn people's homes in Imo State. And you call that thing a country? It is a shithole, as Trump famously said. I'm telling you the truth. They duplicate, they steal, they pillage. As bandits are pillaging you, taking your land from you, your so-called Fulani APC politicians are pillaging you by duplicating projects and pocketing the money. Tomorrow, the idiot to come out on Channel TV or AIT. Our country needs to be one. We need to synergize and look for a way out of this. Meanwhile, his pocket is stuffed with 36 billion. Criminals everywhere. The zoo has fallen. Nigerian military wants politicians and soldiers against coup. There, there are some types of discussions you have in Nigeria that makes me wonder what type of God created you people. What type of schools you went to. There is a senior advocate of Nigeria, allegedly, alleged senior advocate of Nigeria, asking for coup to be conducted. And I want to ask him, which part of the world, civilized world, even ordinary Egypt, 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 ordinary Egypt, can you have people coming out, somebody who is learned, I believe he has read history to come out to say the military should take over. What stops you from taking over? Does power belong to the military? Okay, you're telling us that whoever is carrying a gun is who power belongs to. A senior advocate of Nigeria. No wonder the entire judicial system, the entire legal system in the zoo is, uh, is laughable. In the history of the world, if you want to change a government, it should be led by the people, by a popular uprising. That was the mistake that Nzogu made. Nzogu shouldn't have led the coup of 1966. What for? It's not your job. Your job is to defend the territorial integrity of the zoo, if, if it has one, that is. You're a soldier. It's not your job to be dabbling into politics. Allow the people to feel the pain so much that one day they will say enough is enough. That is the type of change that transforms society. And I expect somebody who is a senior advocate of Nigeria to understand this very simple fact. But it's lost on him. Tomorrow you'll say he's learned. He's an elite. He's educated. But all his education is pure nonsense. If you're asking the army to take over, that means you do not trust the people. Is army the people? Every popular revolution around the world in the history of mankind has been led by ordinary people. Why are you inviting the army to their business? Remember Russia? There was a time that they, they, during the dying days of the Communist Party in Russia, they tried to send the troops to go and kill people. I remember very clearly, Boris Yeltsin mounted the tank, one of the tanks that the soldiers that came to Russian White House to bulldoze it was driving. He mounted it and spoke to his people. The army said, the army of Russia said, we are not going to fire on our people. In Nigeria, if the army can say tomorrow, we are not going to fire on the people, things will be different, it will change. But because, of course, we are from Africa, slightly primitive, you know, African people, very primitive, very crude, if they promise you money and good life for your family, everybody else can go to hell. What Clark should have been saying is, let the army not fire on protesters when they come out on the streets to demand the change of government, not to ask the army to take over. It is a free lesson that we're giving to them. 
there has to be uprising, simultaneous uprising everywhere. I have said to Nigerian youth time and time again, we are number them. The only reason why NSAS protests collapsed was because of the ethnic sentiment introduced by Yoruba journalists. Kotsi of Tinubu, that was what killed it. What is it saying? Oh, that the Biafrans cannot come uh, to Lagos to do this, to do that. That was when they killed it. NSAS should have solved all the problems of the zoo. If we rise above it, if we rise above tribal considerations, focus our mind to destroy these people that have come to destroy us. Believe you me, we are going to succeed. We must rise up at the same time, the same minute, the same second. Our goals are very, very simple. Every instrument of state, every political party apparatus must go down. Once it goes down, the issue has collapsed. Now, what they will do from Master Rock is to say, let us bring the people to negotiate the constitution. That's how it is done everywhere. You must force for them to do something. They are not going to do anything on their own. Never, ever, ever. You must compel them. You must force them. How do you compel them? There has to be simultaneous uprising everywhere at the same time in Nigeria. For only 48 hours, believe you me, they will call for the Sovereign National Conference. Because we have numbered the army. And I'm not sure that any stupid soldier is going to come down from Sambisa Forest, having escaped death at the <laughs> hands of Boko Haram, to come back to start shooting people in his village. It's not going to happen. That is how you change things. Not calling for a coup. Not calling for impeachment. They can't impeach him. They will not do anything until you do something. That's how this life is. You see, when the revolution happened in England, it was led by Oliver Cromwell. The, the king of England was saying, oh, God appointed us. We have blue blood. With the, Oliver Cromwell said, I will cut off your head to prove to you that your blood is also red. That was what Oliver Cromwell said to King Charles I. Go and check it. George Washington led the popular revolution in America and said enough is enough. We want to build a country where all men are born equal. Not uh, this is a Viscount. This is a Duke. This is an L. All that rubbish. This is a Lord. No. We are all equal. And they built it. Popular resistance. Popular revolution. That is what is needed in the Zoological Republic of Nigeria. You must understand that very, very clearly. We must rise up now. We have numbered the police. We have numbered the army. You must understand Precisely what I'm saying. We have number them. We are more than them. What they have, we have right now. They just can't come and start. All of our people, those in Abuja and Lagos, oh, don't let him go on. Did you see that the soldiers were shooting in Olu today? And also, you know, are you aware of that? That the Yugo, Puz, or Demma, the Sarikin Fulani is the one that brought the war to Imo State. We have number them. We must abandon our businesses for one or two days. We must deal with these people. Only then, I'm telling you the truth, will they call for the Sovereign National Conference to say, what do we do? Until you get to that point, you are merely wasting your time. Writing, protesting. Now, I heard some mothers were protesting about their children that were kidnapped. They went to National Assembly. Even National Assembly cannot get the person in Asorok to speak. So what do you think they can do for you? Not who? absolutely nothing and these are the things you must understand i want everybody now asking for regime change in nigeria to understand this that is why i say that nigerians are not smart they're not intelligent they're very foolish people i say it all the time without apologies to anyone nigerians are naturally very very foolish they're very very stupid and i'll prove it to you tonight since there is doubt let me put it that way as to the identity of the man in Asorok, what I expected the likes of Clark to say, the senior advocate of the zoo, is very simple. If you want to change, if you want Fulani to, to, to go mad tomorrow, very simple. We do not believe that whoever you have in Asorok is Buhari, since he cannot address us. We need proof that he is Buhari. Believe him in Nigeria will change within, within one week. 
When we gave you the expo, when we gave Nigeria the expo to say, only question the identity of the man in Asrock. You have all the proof. You have a little boy today. Tomorrow he's a 25 year old. The next day he's a fourth year old. Nobody knows his hands is so fresh. You know he's not Buhari. All of you, you know that. That is holding his neck. Even to question, even to ask the question, why does he have a hole in his neck? And Fulani Banditri will stop. Your land that they are seizing will stop. You will leave your IDP camps and you go back home. Only one thing you need to do. Don't ask for impeachment. Don't even do a revolution. Let's even put that to one side. Ask them to bring out that man in Asarok to address the nation. And you, 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 have, you have your answers. I'm telling you the truth. You know, God is miraculous. He gave you ways to deal with the Fulani Janjaweed. But all of you messed it up. We told you. All that Clark needs to do is let there be a DNA test to prove that this man is the real Buhari that we know. The old man, the sickly, dying old man that we know. That had a brain tumor. Show us his him. I'm telling Fulani will change overnight. First of all, they'll bring their DSS to grab a few people, which is what they normally do. And DSS, as you abducting people, the day we abduct you, I hope you will not so cry. Yo. Now you're going about abducting people. One day you'll be abducted as well. And when we do, I know that you just resign nothing from Lagos. Our security men, now that our security men are abducting people, you will not see it. But the day they themselves are abducted, you start complaining, you start crying, you start whining all over the place. Simply ask for Buhari to do a live press briefing or ask for the DNA of the idiot in Asorok, Muhammad, Yusuf Abaka Muhammad, and the zoo is gone. You get to the gym change of Anna. But in fact, they'll tell you that he's going to London, he's sick. He's incapacitated now. Subhanallah, please take over. That's all. Any day, all of, forget about it, that which don't focus zero down on the identity of the man in Asrog that his house is burning and he's not speaking. Is that the president? <laughs> which way in the world will you have this level of insecurity bordering on a civil war and no comment from the person you claim is the commander in chief and the president, His Excellency, Mr. President Odamovich? Because he is not Buhari. Mr. Clark, rather than asking for a coup, Rather than asking for impeachment, I have made it easy for you people. Should I say easier for you people? Simply ask for the man in Asarov to come out and prove who he is. And it's over. Game, set, and match. As in chess, those of us that play chess. It's checkmate. It's finished. It's over. Bye bye. Full on the Jamja Buddhism is gone. God gave you that window of opportunity. But Yoruba media with their greed, with their greed, and the sophisticated moronic brain saves the Flamish and Jamaican. Simply ask for the man and an Asarok to prove who he is. Why can't he speak? Anybody that knew the old Buhari, do you think that this new Buhari is the same person? Of course, the answer is no. Of course. Yes, yes, no. They say we have uncovered plot to remove Bu Bu uh, Buhari through civil unrest. Yes. Go, I want DSS, the army and the police. Some of you are illiterates anyway. Just simply go online and Google sitting presidents removed by their people. You will see it there. How was uh, Hosni Mubarak removed from office in Egypt? Is it not, is it not by popular uprising? In Romania, popular uprising? Everywhere, like popular uprising? Because we are the people. Power belongs to the people. If they do not like what you're doing, you go to hell. But in Africa, they will say, oh, because it's full and it's our turn. If you know it is your turn, it is full and that means we are not supposed to be together in the first place. That means we are different. If every little thing, as they did during the ancestors' protest, if every little thing, we invoke ethnicity and we invoke tribe, that means ab initial, we should not be together. You cannot claim that everybody is a Nigerian. When it comes to solving a Nigerian problem, you now hide under your ethnic group, under your tribe, to seek refuge. You hide under your tribe to seek refuge. It is not going to happen in our time. Ask for the uh, ID of the man in Abuja and um, the idiot is gone. We have done a lot. IPOB, I commend all of you. 
all you children of heaven that the zoo is where it is today is down to the work you've been doing over the years sometimes i know we can be very harsh on ourselves but we have done very well mind you we have done very well look at what esm has done in a very short period of time that even dave omar he came out to say that there is no more yet yala in a boy state you did it you made it possible tenacity doggedness and determination and that's where we are where we are today we are we have dissolved the zoo more or less and that is why some idiots that have been relegated to the background are doing everything to keep their name in the public domain even at the risk of sounding like a mad dog you know the one, one, one animal was making a caricature of himself. Maybe the price of cement has gone up and is making him mad. He cannot finish his hostel. So he came out to talk rubbish to try to keep his name somehow in the public domain. They cannot match our pedigree, our influence, and our reach. They understand that IPOB is the engine driving this very movement towards its natural and inevitable sovereignty. We are the catalyst for every other person rising up to ask for freedom. I will do the work, brethren, acknowledge that before me. Because of you people, that's why what we're doing, they said to me. Middle belt the same. How many days did I ask Middle belt to come up and they did? Mugoko, no, no, I that is why I'm glad this evening that the Middle Belt have released their country flag, their currency and coat of arms. I must encourage them. I am encouraging Middle Belt to continue to do what they are doing because that is the right way to go. Freedom for everybody. And you will get oil and gas from Biafra and for free. And for those of them saying, oh, we are from South, 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 we are from Niger Delta and all that rubbish. Remember also we have the largest gas field in Ohaji. We have oil in Ebema, we have oil in Mbidi, we have oil in Awamama, we have oil in Aguleri, we have oil in Ukuta. Are you, are you, are you listening to me? Oil everywhere, oil in Okwa. In Abia, it's the so called Abia State where I come from. There is oil. There's oil in Ogwaru. In Ogwaru, if you go to River Niger, you will see oil coming out of the bed of River Niger. You will see it there with your naked eyes. Because of the ginger weed in the north, I may be talking rubbish. So even the oil we have in Igbo speaking territory of Biafra alone, we can supply all of you free oil and gas in perpetuity. Middle Belt, you will stand on your own. We guarantee we are going to dredge River Niger all the way to Lokoja. So you will have free, in fact, we will internationalize River Niger. So you will have free, toll free shipping all the way to Lokoja, your river port. You have nothing to be afraid of. And everything I'm saying to you, we are going to put down in a treaty. Signed before Israel, USA, Canada, EU, China, and Japan. International treaty. So you will know that we have nothing to hide. We want everybody to be free. Our fight is not about oil and gas. I keep saying that to you all the time. We will give you oil and gas for free. That the very treaty guaranteeing that will be overseen by the international community. So we cannot renege on it. I want you to understand that to this very day. That is why the death of the innocent must be avenged. I want to let the army and the police to understand this. If you go about killing innocent people, you're going to die as well. The time and place of your dying people will choose for you. You will not know. You can be doing your crack right the day time in a way, no, no. Eventually, you're going to die. I assure you of that. Watch and see. Hope who's on them man will not be there when you're dying. You see that guy that you're doing over now, he's shooting gun, they're jumping up and down. The day you will die, hope who's on them will not be there. And you would have wasted your life for nothing. And for, and for those of them that want to be noticed,
you know, running around. Ah, 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 that's the big thing, you know, when they run out of cash, they want to attract attention from Abuja. Oh, go, go. They start singing. Hey, hey, a non government came to my house. <laughs> if you see a non government, will you, will you, will you stand? Uh, yeah. Stupidity. Sabo, Sabo, <laughs> Sabo. To not be well with them. In the middle belt, they are crying. The reason why they are crying in the middle belt is because <laughs> if you have said to Benue people and TV people to be precise, who are crying today, that will document well for you. I'm sure today they will say yes. Ojuku went to Aburi to negotiate restructuring. They rejected it. They lied. They used their media preponderance to propagate lies against the innocent man. They levied war against Biafra. The first shot of the war was fired at Gekem. Or Gekem to be absolutely precise and was fired by the Nigerian army. Fulani have always wanted to conquer us. You know, Britain thought that the Fulanis were very mild, you know, people, very stupid, they want to squander money, they want to own houses abroad and all the rest of it. <laughs> they never knew that these are vicious, wild beasts. <laughs> now they have realized it. <laughs> Britain is now saying, eh, you know, can now see it, isn't it? Today, Benway TV, those that they convinced, the evil man is your problem, Jaffa is your problem, they're the ones who are crying today. Even the first lady of Benway State is crying. Every day, killings in Benway, every blessed day, because they will take it from you. Unless you rise up now to do something. No fewer than 17 persons, including women and children, have been reportedly killed, slaughtered by headsmen in the home of the wife of the Benway State Governor, Mrs. Eunice Otto. Very clear, isn't it? The same people that call you North, we are from the North, we North, against the South. <laughs> now they are the ones who are slaughtering you. What does that tell you about these people and their mindset? What does that tell you about the way they think and the way they reason? What does that tell you about your new alliances, the alliances you should be forming is with the South. Benway, Middle Belt, you must know this. Your future lies in aligning yourself with Biafra and the Duduwa. Anything else is suicide. Because those people, they will take your land from you. They will kill you. They will impoverish you. They will rape your children. They will abduct you for ransom. And the police will not do anything because all these crimes I've just enumerated, they are all not federal offenses. And you don't have state police to arrest them. Do you see how clever the Fulani is? That is why we must rise up now to challenge them. That is why we must defeat them. All it takes is for all of us to rise up at the same time. If we decide tomorrow now that we're all going to come out on the streets tomorrow, across the Middle Belt and the South, is this whole game is over. They will send, in fact, police will never come because we'll kill them. They can't even come. Are they mad? Newspaper, the arch conservative guardian is of Nigeria. Arch, these are the people who want Nigeria, they are the ones eating the money of the zoo from time. So they believe in one Nigeria. They are even asking, and can you believe people are begging their own president they claim they voted for? There is no wisdom in silence. Please, uh, speak up. Uh, we are begging you. A whole editorial of Guardian newspaper. The same day that senators are complaining. Let him speak. He cannot speak because he is not Buhari. Guardian newspaper. You people should open your brain. I know that black people are naturally very stupid, but for one's reason. He cannot speak. The old Buhari, you don't need to prompt him to speak. He loves talking. 
This one is Yusuf Abaka Mohammed because Jubril contracted Corona and ran back to Sudan and is having fun now with all the money he made. Nearly $250 million he made impersonating Buhari, wearing his mask. Everybody involved in the recruitment of Jubril has been assassinated or killed. Remember the death of the Nigerian diplomat in, in Khartoum, in Sudan? That was the man that recruited uh, Jubril al Sudan. They killed him to kill every trace of discovery. There is no wisdom in silence. A whole Guardian newspaper editorial that tells you all you need to know. They are begging him to speak. Being the head of a representative democracy that requires regular engagement with the electorate, the leader is reasonably expected to talk to and talk with and generally keep in touch with the people through many channels available in this 21st century. In these times, Buhari's silence is no longer golden. He is silent because he's not Buhari. No. That is why he is silent. He is not Buhari. Guardian newspaper editorial board, the person you're writing to is not Buhari and can never speak. Unless they carefully prepare him once, 10 minute speech, once every six months. And you people are condoning such nonsense because you allowed these people to exist. You allowed the foreign to bend your back hand. Yoruba media, you gave Fulani the upper hand. That is why they are doing what they're doing. The complacency of the middle belt, the complacency of the middle belt, the likes of Gowon, of Danjuma, keep shouting your one Nigeria and they swallow you up. Keep shouting your one Nigeria and they will swallow you up. Please come and speak to us. Come and speak to us. The army will never invite Sheikh Gumi. That the army can abduct Fadam Baka. The army cannot go and invite any bandits in the north because it's not on the fence. But the army can summon an undo lawyer for saying that 3,000 foreign people are camped in their area to tell you that these, these people they planned all these things. Why you Nigerians cannot see it, I don't understand. A legal but Mr. Wole Odushola Odushola said that there are about 3,000 Fulani men taking shelter, in, taking shelter inside Okitibuba army barracks. The, these fighters, they come and they stay in army barracks. He's a lawyer. They stay Fulani. Give me these people, these people, these people. Nigeria, you people, you don't deserve to live. You deserve what the Fulani are doing to you. Fulani will go and bring killers and murderers Terrorists have put them in, in army camp. And the army will provide them support. When I told you that the army provides support for foreign terrorists, you never believed me, but it is here. Hey, from a Yoruba man, no? Not from a Biafra. And you know what the army did? The army invited him for arrest. We are going to arrest you. Who, who, who asked you to say such a thing in public? That is your one Nigeria for you. And I, I keep asking everybody, is this the Nigeria you're praying for? Is this the type of place you want your children to be born and to be raised in? These are evil people. These are people who do not even understand the meaning of government. These people do not have common sense. Their brain is dysfunctional. All they want to do is to conquer you. Look at middle. For those of you shouting one Nigeria in the south, go to middle belt and see what's happening to them. For those of you claiming Nigeria will be better one day, I want you to go to Benue State, I want you to go to Kogi State, I want you to go to all to Niger State and see what is happening to them before you pray for one Nigeria. The reason why these things happen to them is because uh, they were interested in one Nigeria. They were. And a whole army barracks is now housing terrorists. And any day we chase those terrorists into the army barracks, you say, oh, they're they attacking the army, our security forces, our security services. All of you writing your security services, why don't you blame your army when they're harboring terrorists in their barracks? Why don't you blame them? You will not blame them. But you want to blame those who are blowing the whistle on these animals from the Sahel. Look at how the Fulani caliphate terrorists they did not just fall from heaven. It was the likes of El Rufai, the same Fulani, Fulani politicians that groomed them. 
because they want to remove Jonathan from office. There is no show of force in the North, but in the East, people are being killed. A businessman was killed with a friend in his car. You know what? I have not heard anybody write any condemnation or condemnatory um, um, statement against the army in Owari. No one. But any day that is revenge attack by a non gunman on these people, you start writing your rubbish. Now that this man has been killed with his friend, for not that he's a businessman in his car, they shot him dead. Tomorrow now, when an army or police officer is shot dead, you start talking rubbish as usual, talking nonsense. But nobody is talking about this innocent man that has been killed. The zoo is the way it is today because of people from the South encouraging evil that the Fulani people have been doing. As if it won't stop there. Because now we have risen up to pick up arms. I'm saying it live so that the whole world can hear me. We have picked up arms to defend our land against Fulani terrorists. We are no longer going to turn the other cheek for you to slap us. No, 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 no. Before you even freeze, if you raise your hand to slap us, we'll slap you two times already. Now they want to control firearms coming to the country. And do you know who they appointed to control the firearms? A <laughs> flooding man. <laughs> so flooding will simply take the firearms from you and give it to me, Allah, to continue killing you. They said uh, that their president, Yusuf Abaka Muhammad of Nauf, uh, aka Muhammad Buhari, has approved the establishment of a national center for the control of small arms and light weapons. And who is going to head it? <laughs> Nigeria and federal character. I remember when they used to torment Jonathan on federal character. You implement federal character. You are no longer following federal character. Yoruba media was busy pushing Jonathan. I don't know why the European media are afraid of Hausa or of us. Uh, I do apologize to Hausa. I'm afraid of Fulani people anyway. Yoruba editors, why are you afraid of Fulani? You cow, you wretched, little livered cowards. Why are you afraid of Fulani? On that you are writing John Coleman of rubbish. Yoruba pastors every day preaching against Jonathan, coming out and having rallies. All of a sudden, you can no longer have rally under your, your fearful Fulani masters. You're cowering like a, a wretched coward that you are. All of them. Thank God for the young men and women of Ududwala. They have risen up. They're the ones I have respect for. And of course, by the banjo. The rest I have no regret for them. Look at your pastors. What they were doing. You build 10 billion people auditorium. Collecting money to speak the truth to power you cannot do it. You cannot do it. And you call yourselves men of God. You are not men of God. You are men of Lucifer. You are men of the devil. The Jesus Christ that you claim, you emulate him. Being a Christian means being a follower of Christ. I am, I'm speaking now to Yoruba mega pastors. Because they are thieves. They are criminals. I'm saying it live on air. You know me, I don't give a toss. I speak the truth, always. Yoruba pastors and their media are evil. Yoruba pastors, I want to teach you the Bible because you don't know the Bible. I want you to refer back to your Bible. I don't have the exact verse, no, whatever. But I want you to go back to your Bible. Yoruba pastors, the mega pastors. Not, 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 not the man on the house on the rock, oh. Not, uh, is he Ade, Ade Frati? Is he Ade Frati? He's called Ade Frati. I don't know his name. I am exempting the pastor of the house on the rock. He's a good man. And a man of God, I must say. So, I must qualify what I'm saying. <laughs> but you see the other ones <laughs> with uh, private jets <laughs> and their white suit. <laughs> Criminals, businessmen with the Bible. I don't want to curse them because there's no need. I don't want to cause them. You people attack Jonathan about federal character that not enough Yoruba people are in the service of the government at ministerial level then. You complained. You heard rallies. 
Today, there is death everywhere, every blessed day. You cannot rally anymore because you're cowards. You're not serving God. The Christ you claim you're following, this is for Yoruba mega pastors, with the exception of House on the Rock. The Christ you're following, you claim to be following, you don't even understand. Because if you people are genuine men of God, you will do what Christ did. Christ went into the temple in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, I must say. The high priests, politicians, were changing money in the house of God. And he called them vampires, snakes. He flogged people who were changing money in the house of God and said, this is the house of my father. You don't come here to trade and change money. But today, you people are so avaricious. All you care about is money, not even the word of God. Not the word of God. If you care about the word of God, you will speak the truth to this very useless, idiotic, full and wrong caliphate government. But you are afraid. Because they have your secrets. You don't want them to release your secrets to the public. Under Jonathan, who is a gentleman, you hounded him and you harried him every blessed day until he left office. You kept calling Christ and you kept calling God. The time has come for you now to come out and call Christ and call God, and you are all missing. I remind you once again of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I remind you of the, again of the pastor, the minister for House on the Rocks, who is a Yoruba man, fearless. I remind you of, so of, of course, Ingila is also a very good man, fearless. Mount the pulpit and condemn evil, you cannot do it because you're all compromised, because you're all businessmen. I feel sorry for those of them that go to listen to you people. I feel sorry because those of us are going straight to hell. I feel sorry for them, honestly speaking. Ignorance upon ignorance. That is why, let me tell you the name of the person who is going to, to be the um, new coordinator of um, light arms, so you don't bring in arms into Nigeria. His name is retired Major General L. A. M. Diko. Fulani. <laughs> Everything is Fulani. And you're all clapping. Yoruba media. You're, anytime I'm calling somebody and I'm pointing their, their evil, Yoruba media, it won't be well with you. The, that people are dying today in Taraba, in Yobe, in Brown, in Sambisa, anywhere, is because of Yoruba media. Yoruba media, they always side with the oppressor. Always siding with the oppressor. I don't know what is wrong with them. Is it that you people are born with this evil inside you? Or once you study journalism, you become evil? What is wrong with Yoruba journalists? You always side, you always siding the oppressor against the oppressed. You people are evil, along with your pastors. Very, very evil people. And thank God for the new generation. The new uh, arms controller is his full animal. So he can take your guns and give it to me yet yala. They'll be killing you. Not one day has me yet yala president been invited by the DSS or the army for questioning. For all those inflammatory remarks, not for one day, not for one single day, never. I remember Punch newspaper when they were persecuting, persecuting me and IPOB killing us. The editor of the Punch newspaper never referred to Buhari then as a major general. It was only when a Yoruba man was illegally arrested that they changed. And the Punch newspaper editor wants me to think that we are all Nigerians, should work for one Nigeria. Such nauseating hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. That is why the zoo is the way it is. That is why you have no running water, you have no good roads, you have no light. Because it is the duty of the journalists to wake up the consciousness of the people, to teach the people what they write should be. It is not happening. It is the duty of the men of God to rise up to speak truth to power. They do not do it, with the exception of a few people. That is why the zoo is in the mess that it is. Yoruba journalists are there, and only Lagos has a viable seaport. Whereas the same Atlantic Ocean flows through Warre, 
flows through Iguacha, goes through um, uh, Calabar. It never touched Yoruba media one day to say, this is not good. We are in the same country in the interest of this one, Nigeria. We feel that Warren Seaport should be opened to employ people, to move goods down there, to develop that very area economically. Calabar Seaport should be opened. Iguacha Seaport should be opened. No. I mean, and I wonder, but you claim you're, you're a Nigerian. Others are Nigerians as well. But it never occurred to any of them to say, let us use this power and influence we have to change this obnoxious policy. And who destroyed the economy of the South? Is Obasanji who did it? Let me leave it there for now. I will, I will do a very special program one day. Bandits threatened to kill students abducted at a Kaduna private university. Who are the bandits? They are Fulani people. They kidnapped Christians mostly and are slaughtering them as we speak. And you wake up tomorrow morning and you say you're a Nigerian. And you have pastors who are more concerned about tithes and offering than praying for these very hapless victims of one Nigeria. I don't call it, a, they're not victims of banditry, they are victims of one Nigeria. And all of you who over the years have been promoting one Nigeria, I blame all of you. You are responsible for this because had you people held the front to account by insisting on devolution of power, on the, no matter what you say to hell, devolution of power, this nonsense will be happening. But you are black people, I don't blame you. You have no soul and you have no conscience. You have no empathy. What concerns other people is of little or no consequence to you. And that is why black people are poor. Our wickedness and, and evil is second to none. Second to none. Everybody in Nigeria understands that there is only one simple solution to the problem of Nigeria. It is dissolution. The they know it very well. But because they think that oh, Nam Nekano will not honor his words. He will not give us oil and gas for free. Oh, please let us continue this one, Nigeria. And I have said it many times. All the minorities in the north will be taken care of. Once Biafra becomes free, it gives us the impetus and the platform from which we can save you from full and emasculation and destruction. If Nigeria continues the way it is right now, Fulani will overrun the whole of the Middle Belt. I'm telling you, Tiv Nation will come under attack. Bachama is gone, Bilob is gone, all these people are gone. Only TV is standing strong right now as we speak. And to an extent, Jukun, if we allow Nigeria to continue, because the number of Fulani influx, these, these terrorists is, is limitless. They have a huge number of people to come in and the attraction is oil and gas. They have seen how, how wretched, poorly educated, full of people are living large on the proceeds of oil and gas. That's something I need to remind me here, of course, and all those who stupidly call themselves Niger Delta. The full of is coming, they kidnap, they make more money than the state government does in the South. And they return to, to, to wherever they came from. These are the things that must guide your thinking, and that is why Nigeria must end. As I said a few days ago, Nigeria must be dissolved. Let everybody go back to where they come from. If they now wish to come back together to form a country or whatever it is and tell their business, let the people decide. That's all we are saying. Let the people decide. There is no need calling for a coup, for somebody to take over a government. No, 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 not at all. Call for popular uprising and ask the army not to open fire. That's all. You know, even the army understands if they open fire, they are dead. University students being abducted every blessed day. And all a pastor is interested in is tithes and offerings. Very, very sad indeed. But I, I, I don't blame these kids who are being kidnapped. I blame those that wish to sustain one Nigeria. And as they are, they are kidnapping people, I don't even want to be talking about the spread of insecurities that you have across the zoo. 13 more people are killed. As armed headers, no longer armed for any terrorists, but armed headers attack the community. 
then when he's under attack and under siege, the sooner they reach an agreement with us, the better for them. So we can move ESN there to checkmate them. We know how to fight them. In a boy state, we did it very well, which is just neighboring Benue state. They should come out openly to ask for the help of ESN, and we'll go there and make sure we drive away these vagabonds. That's what we need to do. People are dying every blessed day. Every blessed day right across the zoo. And you know the solution. The solution is the solution. The solution to Nigeria is the solution. Once you do that, everybody will be free. There's no need ranting and uh, writing rubbish every blessed day. It doesn't solve anything. Flanagan wouldn't understand that. The killings can happen in Benin, not in our land. You come to our land, you kill us, we kill you back. It's as simple as that. If you're a police or you're army or anybody you kill, just one day. We may allow you one or two weeks to breathe. After that, you'll be dead. If you kill us, we're going to kill you. So under this climate that you have people saying, South South will not be our next. I don't want to talk about this great halot. South South will not be our next. Buhari's aid, back to week. Can you just imagine? The same thing that they did from the Middle Belt. The same thing that some fools did from Yoruba land. The same thing that some fools fools did in our land. Look at it now that is full and at your doorstep and you're crying and you're lamenting. South, South will not be annexed. And you went to school. And I tweeted actually. I said, <laughs> I made a tweet which was very popular today, I must say. I asked this, this great harlot. I, I shouldn't have responded to her, but I had to because to put the record straight. straight. I said to her, if you say that South South will not be annexed by Biafra, then tell your Fulani Janjaweed masters to refer to the 1966 coup by Yuzoko as a South South coup, not an Igbo coup. That's number. I'm sure that will shut her up. And the other lap dog, the other Fulani, Mwike is the wife, the, the husband is Tambua. Dinaloya or Tambua. You know, ones who. I don't want to be, this is a family ready, I don't want to go too far. I don't know what they put in his mouth. I don't know what Dan Duwal put in his mouth. Uh, maybe it's lollipop, I have no idea. That is why he's talking rubbish. Talking rubbish. Uh, and they talk about South South and the Niger Delta, all this rubbish. First of all, Imo State is in Niger Delta, for your information. Abia State is part of Niger Delta. For those of you idiots hiding under Niger Delta to be talking rubbish, that's number one correction. And number two, let us not uh, label ourselves with this whole South South, uh, you know, nomenclature, all this rubbish. Where is who? Who was the like? <laughs> Maybe they won't know because they didn't go to school anyway. Uh, we can after snorting cocaine and talking rubbish. We cannot ask you a question. Where is General Philip Effiong from? And by the way, do you know that General Philip Effion was the last head of state of Biafra? Head of state, general, the head of state. Are you aware of that? Where is he from? He's from South South, you know. Okay, so you want people to have regard for you more than the head of state of Biafra land? <laughs> I'm asking you a simple question. You claim you're from the South South South. Uh, very soon you'll be very close to Argentina in your southness. I want to ask you a simple question. Are you telling me that people will have more regard for you than a general, a Biafran general and head of state, Philip Effion, from your so-called South South? I'm asking you. That thing your husband gave to you, we care. Because I know you're not in mind. I don't want to go in there. I don't want people to accuse me of um, homophobia because I'm not. Anybody can do whatever they like. That's their business. That's your boy, that your husband, the Tambua. You, you go to Sokoto, they put, they, they, they put down your trousers and your possessions. And that's the one you come back to, to reverse, to a place you call it back to talking rubbish. After smoking cooking. If you know you cannot handle Tambua, don't, why are you taking cocaine? We can, why are you snorting? Why do you take cocaine? You don't want to feel pain. That's why you take cocaine. Before you go to the bedroom with your with your husband. Not ashamed of yourself, idiot. You're talking rubbish. Philip Bethel is from South South, so to speak. The last head of state of Biafra. And that is why Akwaibom is doing us proud. You're a wretched slave. Look at Ken Sariwa. Are you more than Ken Sariwa? <laughs> Look at Mbaka. Mbaka used to be with 
them before. In your age group, you have wretched, cocaine, snorting idiot. In two years' time, if I told the zoo can survive, you come down. Then I buy a bonando. You will see what will happen to you. Fool. Keep making noise for the gallery. Keep making noise every day, you make noise. So your husband will acknowledge you from the north. That, hey, that's my girl. He's still well in the rivers. He's still well. You're not ashamed of yourself. May let him have mercy upon your soul. You are one man. Democracy is one man, one vote. You claim you're a Democrat, you behave as if you're a fool. It's import dictator. Every component, ethnic nationality in Biafra land will have the choice to choose via a referendum if to if they are to become a part of Biafra or not. That day, should you wish or choose to do so, you only have one vote. And I'm even sure that your wife will vote for Biafra. Because you, cocaine has eaten your brain. The day they will take you, the day Fulani will deal with you, I can forgive anybody in life, I can never forgive you. The day Fulani will take you. <laughs> Mark today's date, 5th of May 2021. Everything I say comes to pass, I'm sure you know that. <laughs> the day they will deal with you, I get you on an hour. If after what I'm back at it for them, they are behaving this way, imagine what they will do to you. You're a very foolish man. A man whose local government starts with an Igbo name says he, he is not Igbo. <laughs> the, the, the stupidity of these people is astonishing. If you're not Igbo, do you think, uh, uh, what do you think the German will see you as? So if you kill your fellow Igbo people, Fulani will promote you. Typical Sabu and the waste of space. Yet it was the same Igbo people that voted for Jonathan from your so-called South South. The whole of South South, how many votes did he give to Jonathan? Jonathan had the highest number of votes from the Southeast. True or false? We can all these South South garbage idiots and Nigeria morons. Southeast gave Jonathan more votes than all of you put together. Twice. Because as one man said to me, you know, worry. I asked him, why are you voting for Jonathan? He said, Jonathan is my brother. It's an inferiority complex. And, and the crimes you people committed, that's what is chasing you. You are afraid of abandoned property in a water. You took the properties belonging to your own flesh and blood. And you know that in our culture, the land will strike you dead. If you take your brother's property, it's in the Bible, it's in the, it's in the Torah. Thou shalt not covet the property of your brother. It is in the Bible, Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. And we are the people of the old, the people of the book. You understand this very well. That is why some of you in the Ikwale land, because you stole properties that doesn't belong to you. You think that if you are glad that they say, oh, these are my brothers, so the land will kill you. Some of you grew up and went to school on stolen properties. Thieves rose in the ocean. That is why you say, I'm not you, but not you. Because you were trained with money stolen from your own flesh and blood. You should be ashamed of yourselves. That is why you say you're not evil, because you know the land will kill you. As somebody said, it's only in the zoo that the more you educate them, the more foolish they become. The most unstable people in the world are Nigerians. Even their, uh, their pastors are even more confused. They are politicians, they have no solutions to anything. Their chiefs and their emirs are just watching and pleading for allocation. The more you enlighten them, the more confused they become. After all these years, they can't even tell that Buhari is dead. That's how foolish your average Nigerian is. That is why the problem of Nigeria cannot be solved. Because Nigerians have refused to reason. And the only solution is dissolution. And 
and uh, you know, in the in their usual idiotic way in the south, especially in the east, they flee for brigade. <laughs> You remember them shouting uh, Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency. I have news for you. Why PDP considers Atikus uh, Saraki Tambuwa as possible presidential candidates? Omahi, are you listening? <laughs> Omahi and Dodgers of Kalo, are you listening? If Lefus, are you listening? They have divided their Nigeria <laughs> between <laughs> between the north and the north. Yes, because Sariki is, is the north. Tambua, that's Wike's um Wike's husband, is from the north. And I think he's also from the north. One Nigeria for you. This idiots. Anyway, I'm very glad because this these noisemakers about the uh, Igbo presidency, they will now go and sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few announcements to make this evening. Very, very important, please. There are people who are visiting people's homes pretending that they are from PHCN to change your light bulbs for free. These are these are hot and full of terrorists. They will come into your homes and they will plant a bomb and it will go off. Don't allow them to come in. They will pretend they are from the PHCN. Usually three or four of them, they will come into your homes, they will plant mini sticker bombs at your houses, and it will blow up and kill you and your family. Please al alert all your neighbors not to allow anybody claiming they're from PHCN to access your property, please. And we have done a lot of work to make sure there is no checkpoint in our land. There are one or two places where we've been told there are checkpoints, but always in the night they run away. But we are making sure there is no checkpoint in our land. But as I said, that has now given change the situation and given free reign to some people to do whatever they like. There is a toll gate somewhere at a Nemel bus stop, a toll, a toll gate. They are collecting money from people. 1,000 for big lorries and 200 is from the Navy. <laughs> At uh, in ML bus stop, Navy, Madam Mount checkpoint, close road, collecting money. Before you start crying and feeling sorry for them, tell them to dismantle the roadblock. At in ML junction, ask them to dismantle the roadblock. And I'm asking the governor of Anambra State to ensure that this happens within the next two days. Dismantle that roadblock. I don't want any Navy, Air Force, or any roadblock. I do not want it. Very, very important, please. That you remember this and do something about it immediately. Newi community or Newi town, they formed a vigilante group. That vigilante must be allowed to function in a Newi. Because people who are capitalizing on the absence of Nigeria police, that, uh, of course, they, they've been driven away. As I said, no checkpoints, I don't want it. People should not capitalize on the absence of police to be committing crime after taking drugs given to them by politicians. Because ESL is in the bush, that is why groups like Newi Vigilante Group must be in the town. On Asia Vigilante Group, the same. They have, they will not inform on ESN if they do, then they are finished. They must be allowed to operate. Navy Vigilante will operate. On Asia Vigilante will also operate to make sure there is no form of criminality during the daytime within those environments. Very, very important, please. And I want to thank my, my dear brother. I want to thank him. Nemeka, a your form chosen. It's called Nemeka. Thank you very much for your immense support and help. I am grateful, and Chuko Kikabiyama will bless you immensely. He will bless you immensely for your support, outstanding support that he gave to this very noble family. Thank you for that. And on that note, we have come to the end of our program today.
and uh, by way of outro, I don't know how I'm going to get it, uh, but I will try to see if I can play this very tune. This is a, is a song put together in a tribute to the late gallant commander Ikonso, and I want to I want to play it tonight. I want to play tonight as an outro. I will not play our national anthem. I want to play it tonight. I want to play tonight that very song itself. Please, wherever you are, you must be very, very vigilant. You must be very, very vigilant. Very, very vigilant. Please. Because they are abducting, they are killing, and as I said before, the time is coming very, very close when every able-bodied man and woman will enter the nearest bush to make sure that we kill all these people because they are killing us right now. They are killing us right now. They are killing us right now. Once again, I thank you all for listening. And as always, here on Radio Biafra is our hallowed platform where Biafra means the whole world to us. It means the whole world to us. Biafra to some people may mean something different, but to us, it is more than the pursuit of sovereignty. When people ask me these days, what is your religion? I tell them my religion is Biafra. It is the religion of the ancients, the religion of my forefathers. They worshipped Almighty Chuko Kikabi Amabiniwe. And that is the God I'm going to worship. And that is the God that I worship. I don't worship idol. Here on Radio Biafra is where we worship Elohim. Nimemon is Yogu. Because only God Almighty in heaven. Chuko Kikabi is our God. From me, from here, it is good evening. And I know wherever Ikoso is, he is watching and listening to us. Biafra's got talent exclusive. Ikoso! Ikoso! Ikoso!
now have followed this way, look wherever you walk. And walk is ongoing to that effect. And we're not going to stop until the heads are complete. Two thousand of them. Biafra's good talent is 